Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. Thank you that you are our glory and the lifter up of our heads. Many a day that say that there is no help for us. But thou, O oh Lord, as a shield for me, our glory and the lifter up of our heads. So we give you glory. You are our stronghold, our fortress, our help in times of trouble. You are a sure foundation for us. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. This morning we worship you. Many be they that say there is no help for us. But Jehovah, you are help. Certainly you are a cloud, a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire unto us. This morning we are gathered before you. It's a privilege to come before you, Lord. To worship at your feet. We thank you. We open our hearts to receive your word. Speak to us with a voice that wakes the dead. Cause your children to hear. Oh Lord, we thank you. The prayer, oh Lord, is that our minds will be on your word. Our hearts will be open to the word. And I pray that you will give me utterance. It is your word. Activate your word. Let your word become alive in our spirits. Let your word perform its work in us. That the glory will be thine. The praise will be thine. The honor will be thine. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Take your seats. You are blessed. Thank you, Lord. Well, this morning, it's a privilege to speak to you on this wonderful topic of building strong families. I started something some weeks back. I'm believing God to be able to finish it today. I'm trusting God to speak briefly to you. Briefly. The emphasis is briefly. <laughs> so that we'll do what we need to do. Amen. So, some weeks ago, I don't know whether it's three or two weeks ago, I started on a topic I call being a wise builder. And uh, God is interested in builders because he himself is a builder. He says, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So God is a builder. And he's interested in builders. And whatever God gives to you, he gives you the opportunity to build it, to make it beautiful, to make it strong, to make it honorable. Yesterday I was speaking to the, those who came for the colonial service. I said, God planted a garden, created man, planted a garden, placed him in the garden, and then he gave him a responsibility. He said, address it and keep it. In other words, God was saying that build this garden, make it beautiful, make it honorable, make it attractive, make it strong, make it, one, make it a wonderful place. That was what God wanted man to do. So God will always work in partnership with man. So when we are building our families, God will work in partnership with us. It is not God who is going to do everything for you. God is going to do it in partnership 
with you. That's how God operates. Even when you have to be born again, you know, we are saved by grace through faith. The grace is provided by God, but the faith, you must apply faith. You must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Then salvation comes. So God always works in partnership with man. So if you want to build a wonderful family, a strong family, God is available. He's there. The resources of God are there. The strength of God is there. The unction of God, the provisions of God are there. But God will do it in partnership with you. He will not do it alone for you. Say amen. amen. And so, God expects us to be wise builders. The Bible says the wise man built his house upon the rock. It says that if you hear these sayings of man and you do them, you shall, I will liken you to be like a wise man that built his house upon the rock. And that was our foundation scripture. And I'm go, I talked about godly obedience. That when you start the, the journey, even the journey towards building a family, it starts with a relationship. You go into a relationship with somebody, and that relationship should be godly. It should be based or built on the word of God, on what God desires, on what God expects, on what God wants. That's what you build your relationship on. So if you don't build it right, it is very difficult to correct it. If you lay a foundation for a, a, a two-story building and you try to construct a skyscraper on it, the whole building will collapse. Are you hearing me? So, you build on, 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 on the foundation that God has given us. Godly obedience. It starts with obeying God. God always works with people who obey him. The hymn writer says, and we never can prove the delight of his word until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for those who will trust and obey. If you can trust and obey, you will see the favor of God. Or else you come to church, you'll be in church, you will come around and if you don't walk in obedience, the favor, listen to the hymn writer, for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for those who will trust and obey. So it's limited to a particular kind of people, not people who walk into church, but people who obey his word, who can trust the Lord in spite of everything, trust the Lord. And I guarantee you, when your trust is in the Lord, the Bible says, they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, which shall never be moved. You will never be moved. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. This morning, I came to tell you that God has made all provision available for you to build a wonderful and a strong family. But you must walk in the counsel of God. You must walk in the will of God for God to show himself powerful and mighty on your behalf. Say amen. And we talked about godly presence. Godly presence, building a family altar. Then we talk about godly vision, have a vision. And so today I want to talk about three, and if there's room, I'll talk about the four things, building a strong family. Looking at the things that will help us build a strong family. The past that when we walk in, we will build a strong family. But there are some paths when you walk in, you are guaranteed failure. But there are some paths when you walk in, you are guaranteed success and victory and honor. And so, as we come and these words are spoken to you and preached to you from this pulpit, I pray to God that you will have an ear to hear, a heart to obey, and a willingness to do the word of God. A year to hear, a heart to obey, and a willingness to do the work of God. 
That's the attitude you must have when you come into the house of God. Say amen. Now for a family to grow stronger, one of the things that is required is that we must have godly commitment to each other. Godly commitment to each other. We must have an unwavering dedication to one another in the family. The husband must have an unwavering dedication and commitment to the wife. The wife must have an unwavering dedicated commitment to the husband. The parents must have unwavering commitment to the children. The children must have unwavering commitment to the parents. And in a family like this, we must have unwavering commitment to one another. We must be committed to one another. We must stand for one another. We must stand to help each other, to seek the good of each other, desire the good of each other. You know, when, when in the traditional sense, uh, certain, when you are going to marry, they will tell you that, Sometimes we our our mentality is, is is influenced by the the things that we have been taught over the years. The cultural practices that we experience, but we must be influenced by the word of God. If you are in a family where all that you desire is to get the best out of each other, but not to give the best from your end, the family will have issues. You must desire the good for each other. Say amen. And you must be committed. Commitment means that you must be, a man must be faithful to his spouse. One of the things that breaks marriages is unfaithfulness. When you are not faithful to your wife, when you are not faithful to the family, faithfulness is not only limited to the wife, it's Cast across to the family, to the children. When you decide not to be responsible as the head of the home, you create problems for the home. Whatever it takes, you must push everything. There are men who will go out, enjoy life, and care little about the family. And there are women to who I was watching some, some clip. I, I just believe that it is just acting. I just want to believe that it's acting because if it's reality, then it's, it's I, I, I saw demons at work physically. Where a woman uh, uh, prepared, I don't know whether it was Bangkok or something like that, uh, or whatever, put it on the ground. Stepped on the wrapped it fine, put in the baller. Did all sort of things, you know, and then wrapped it nicely. And then the soup, the okra soup, he put it on the floor, brought it from broom, swept it, collected it, and then poured it back into the bowl. Verse 9, added water to it and delivered it. I guess it's just acting. Because my, my, my natural sense, not the Christian sense, my natural sense tells me that this can't be possible. But I should tell you that there are some people who are wicked. 
and they care less about each other. We must be committed to each other. A faithful man who can find. A virtuous woman who can find. We must always have one another at heart. Desire the good of one another. We must be committed to each other. Say amen. Colossians 2.12 Put on, therefore, as elect of God, holy, beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. We must work. One of the things that will show that we are committed to each other is the ability to forgive. Because as for conflict and misunderstanding, it is, it is part of life. So you have situations where you have conflicts and misunderstanding. And you have situations where somebody will hurt you. One of the, 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 the stakeholders in the family will hurt you and hurt you so much. But the Bible is teaching us that we should forbear one another and forgive one another. We should learn to forgive, to learn to let go. Any family that does not work in forgiveness is creating cracks in the family. The family can be destroyed, and most, most families that are broken down, families that collapse, 90% of it is because there was no room for forgiveness. Something happened. Someone was not willing to forgive. Someone found it too difficult to forgive. Jesus said, if somebody does something against you, the disciple asked him, how often should we forgive? He said, 70 times 7. Forgive so long as there is room to forgive. And there's always room. I said, there's always room. Because God will always forgive you. Remember that you yourself, you are a forgiving person. So learn to walk in forgiveness. Learn to let go. Say amen. If you don't walk in forgiveness, we cannot build a strong family. In a family like this, people will do things against you. It is the, I have always said, it is the person who is closest to you that will hurt you. But when they had to learn, find it in your heart to forgive, to let go, forgive and forget. Listen, forgiveness is a decision. I am saying it again. Forgiveness is a decision. It's something you decide. It doesn't depend on feelings. If you want to forgive based on the way you feel, you will never forgive. Because the head will be there. When Jesus hung on the tree, the cross, with the nails in his hands and bleeding and suffering, he cried, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The pain was not gone. The stripes were still there. The nails were still there. The crown of thorns was still there. He was hanging on the tree. The pain was still intense. But in the midst of the pain, he said, Father, forgive them. But they don't know. It's a decision. So when something happens, you don't want to wait till the hurt is gone. Because the hurt won't go instantly. When you are hurt, it is an emotional wound. And there's no wound that gets healed instantly. Are you hearing me? There's no wound that gets healed instantly. That you got a sore. And then when you put medicine on it, instantly it was healed. Even if they, you take it to the, the hospital and they, they, they stitch it, it will take time for it to heal. There's no wound that heals instantly. 
Every wound takes time. Time is a balm for wounds. Time is a balm for wounds. It will take time. Like physical wounds take time for it to heal. In the same way, emotional wounds will take time for it to heal. Over time, the pain will, will, will fizzle out. But instantly, it will not. So that's why this forgiveness is a decision. You decide instantly. You say, I'm forgiving you in spite of the pain that I'm feeling. I forgive you. And so we learn to walk in forgiveness. We will allow the enemy to have the better part of us. Say amen. Learn to walk in forgiveness. Getting committed to each other. Godly commitment. The other thing that we need to do is that we must have godly communication. We have talked about communication over and over again. Over and over again. Communication. Well, like I told the, 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 the Ononia service people, I want to just single out one. One way of communication, your speech. Communication is not only speech or words. You can communicate in very, several ways. You know, there are families that can communicate. You and your spouse, you can communicate in science. You know, for instance, you go into the midst of people and something is happening and you are not happy about it. And you don't want maybe your spouse to get too much involved in it. Maybe you become quiet for just about some five minutes. If your spouse knows, understands the communication, you get the message. So communication is not only speaking from your mouth. It can be science, it can be so many things. But I want to single out speech. Speech. The way we talk. The way we talk. The way we talk. Speech. Speech. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. We speak the truth in love. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. This is God speaking. Don't allow evil communication come out of your mouth. One of the things that you do, you see, when God tells you not to do some things and you do it, there's no grace. There's no support from heaven. Whenever you walk out of the word of God, you don't have support from heaven. You don't have the help of heaven. Anything you do outside God's will, there is no support. That's why when God tells you that you should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers and you go and get equally yoked with unbelievers, there is no help for you. But when you walk in the word of God, the Lord will be a shield for you. The glory and the lifter up of your head. Say amen. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, that it will bring favor into the life of the person that you are speaking to. Don't speak anyhow. Think about the things you say. Where's? Where's our spirit? When they go out, they, I, you can sit down and I, I, I may not touch you. I may not physically abuse you, but I can use words. And your temperature will just rise. Your, your, your heartbeat will increase because of the words that are coming out of my mouth. Because they are spirit. They have influence. And they hit it hits hard. Words. So in the family like this, let's know how to talk to each other. Let's know. Let 
speak with grace so that it will minister grace unto the hearer. We should speak that which is good and edifying to build up. So in a family where you talk anyhow, anybody gets up and talks anyhow, it's, 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 it's a root or a path to destruction for that family. You must know how you talk. Because when you communicate and you don't communicate right, you speak anyhow, you destroy the family. You must learn how to talk and talk right. Godly communication. Godly communication. Our speech should be excellent. Our speech should be clear. Our speech should be good that when I hear from you, I will be lifted up, edified, built up. Say amen. The other thing that requires, maybe I'll say this last one and leave the rest because there's a lot of things we need to do today. This one, and maybe if God permits, I'll add maybe one more. And that'll be it. And that'll be it. There should be godly reconciliation. When an issue happens, we should be able to reconcile quickly and speedily so that we will not give room for the enemy to operate. When we allow division to stand in our way, our families will not stand. Division can break the family. Jesus said something in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. Is brought, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Shall not stand. If you are divided, and, and conflicts can divide you. And when you are divided, you can't stand. You can't stand. So anytime there's conflict, there's conflicts will come. It is part of life. I can't guarantee you that there will be no conflict. Conflicts may come because misunderstanding is part of family life. Understanding is part of family life. You know, the way the way I eat can bring trouble. Or the way I sleep can bring trouble. The way I laugh can bring trouble. Why do you laugh? Ha 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 like that. When you are laughing, laugh like a gentleman. <laughs> Why do you laugh? Ha 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 like that. And that alone can bring trouble. So, and then and the other one say, so, so last thing do you want to control me? <laughs> How do you sleep like that? You sleep and then when you sleep, you throw your hands anyhow. I see it's a duck that is swimming in a river. I've seen families. Where partners are sleeping and you make a mistake and put your hand, they will lift your hand and put it back for you like that. <laughs> so conflicts and misunderstanding are, are part of family life. There's no family that does not go through that. There's no family. You go through misunderstanding. Tension, sometimes tension. Calm the tension. Make sure you work at calming tension in the house. That it goes off quickly. Because the more you do it, your house will be divided and it cannot stand. The house cannot stand. 
a house divided against itself. The master said, it cannot stand. It cannot stand. So learn the ability to say sorry when there's a need to say sorry. There are some partners who don't know how to say sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's so difficult for some people to say it. If you're in a house and you don't know how to say sorry, you are creating a situation that will bring your house down. As you're able to say sorry, at the least and say sorry, sorry doesn't hurt anybody. It only hurts your pride. Sorry. And when sorry is said, you must also have a heart to forgive and to accept the apology. Sometimes when you are saying sorry, cry. It's as if you are speaking Greek. <laughs> so, it's a two-way thing. We should be able, each and every one of us should be able to say sorry and the other party should be able to accept the sorry and to forgive and to let things lie as it is and to continue. Sort yourselves out quickly. Godly reconciliation. Godly reconciliation. Godly reconciliation. And the last thing is godly vigilance. That's all. I told you today I'm speaking briefly. Godly vigilance. Listen. Every family is a target of the devil. Whether the church family or the, the family that we know to be family, husband, wife, children, you are a target of the devil and you've got to be vigilant. If you are not vigilant, the devil will destroy that family because it's all out against the settings of God. The family unit was brought into being by God and the enemy is against anything that God has done. One of the key things, the key targets of the devil is the family unit. Because we know that one is able to destroy the family unit with pockets. You know, it's all a question of broken down families. And you find that the people who have really destroyed this world or, or troubled the world, they are proceeds of products of broken homes. Hitler is one. Go delve deep into people who cause trouble in this world. They are all from broken homes. And the enemy is too able to destroy the home. He can get products that will destroy the world. So godly vigilance is key and you must always be alert against the devil. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Okay, be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, whether you are family, you have an adversary. You have somebody who wants to pull you down. But God says, be vigilant. Be vigilant. Guard against it. Open your eyes to the schemes and the devices of the enemy. He will come in various forms. And sometimes when the devil is acting, you see, you should be able to interpret it some things from the spiritual point of view. Don't interpret it from, from people's just ordinary people's behavior. There's a spirit behind certain actions that take place in the home. The enemy is after all. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walked about seeking whom, seeking which family. It's not guarding themselves against his acts that he may devoid. The devil is all out against you. And that's why you need to be vigilant. You need to guard that thing that God has placed in your hands. You will always come under demonic attack. You will get attacks, external influences. 
some of the external influences are instigated and directed by demons. You should be able to see it. It calls for vigilance. And you will only know it when you are prayerful, when you are covering your family with prayer. Say amen. Guard against internal. Listen, and, and the, one of the things that you must guard against, guard against unnecessary disputes. There are some disputes that are unnecessary. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender what strides. So there are some questions you don't ask in the family. Don't ask some questions in the family. There are some things that will stir up strife in the family. Don't ask those questions. Don't ask those questions. Hmm? Oh, but then you I hear it, Jay. Don't ask such questions. It will create confusion. How will I know? <laughs> you know, I, I, there's a story of a, a, a couple who got married. I said this thing before. A couple who got married and, and they were enjoying their marriage. And then in the course of the marriage, there was, a, there was some small misunderstanding. And you know, God always gives an ending. <laughs> They see that I'm very brief. Very, very, very brief. I'm being very, very, very brief. It's just a sermonette. So I'm taking it easy. <laughs> very, very brief. <laughs> then, <laughs> when they went home, everything was fine. Very nice. And then there was some small conflict. Small conflict. And God always gives every creation of this. He gives the creation some Form of defense. Form of defense or weapons to attack. Sometimes when I look at the fishes in the sea and then you see that God always gives you something that you can protect yourself with. So for the man, he gives you strength. For the woman, he gives you this. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> the woman can talk. So why the one was talking? And the woman said, Then the whole thing turned into, 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 into a, a, a conflict, a whole conflict. So they managed to settle this issue. After settling it, so many months after, they were now enjoying a marriage, having a nice time. And then the man remembered what the woman told him. <laughs> so he asked the woman, what's the problem? Okay, okay. Now, but I'm all at a till at a time. You don't ask such questions. <laughs> you don't ask such questions. <laughs> because they got a filler tie, the front one, <laughs> you know, so you wanted to know which one. <laughs> and the woman said, ah, no, I don't care, I would continue to call that tie. Say no. <laughs> and that one also turned into something else again. <laughs> you know, so, you don't ask certain questions. The Bible says, <laughs> no, 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 go to, oh, you have changed my, my. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, 
knowing that they do gender what? Strive. Don't ask certain questions. Don't ask certain questions. Don't ask certain questions. Because there are certain questions that will create confusion. To know how to ask certain questions. Guard against. Be vigilant. When we apply these things, and all that we have learned this morning, I pray that God will give us grace to be able to build a family that will be the envy of the world. The Lord himself will grant us grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.